This video is made possible by the following sponsors. Make sure to check out their products as well as the rest of my gear in the description below. Hey guys, Jimmy here and welcome back to Assetto Corsa for another video. In today's video, we're going back in time to 1986. Well, kind of anyway. And we're gonna be driving the legendary Lotus 98T as driven by Johnny Dumfries and of course, Ayrton Senna. Now I've driven this car quite a lot in the past, but never have I driven it at Monaco. So here we are today at Monaco. Uh, it is a 2017 version, which isn't quite period correct. But aside from T1 being slightly different, I can't think of many more differences between this version and the version they ran back in 1986. So hopefully it will still make for good driving. This car is famous for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because Adrian Senna do Brazil drove it. And secondly, because it put out in excess in qualifying trim anyway, of 1200 brake horsepower. Now, luckily for us, we have a clear circuit today, which means I can go out there and try and put down some of that 1200 horsepower around arguably one of the most challenging street circuits in the world. So let's go see what five bar of boost feels like. Okay then, so here we are in the pits at Monaco. It's the first time I've done this in VR. It's pretty cool to get to look around. Of course, I look to the left and right and see my big old fat, slick Goodyear tires either side into first gear and let's put away in our 98T. This is pretty damn cool, I must say, being in this car in VR. First time I've been in this car in VR, as I mentioned before. And of course, being an open wheeler in a set of course or in anything in VR, I've said before, of an open cockpit, it's just better. It's just better than single screen, 100%. Anyway, let's not dwell on that too much. Let's get this car up to temperature. Now, you can see above my left hand on the imaginary steering wheel in front of me that uh, I'm on 60% turbo boost right now, which is about 3.5 bar of boost, which is still a hell of a lot of turbo pressure. Just to give you some context, I know my, my Mazda is not a Formula 1 car, I'm not saying that, but my, my little turbo MX-5 on high boost produces 0.8 bar of pressure. That's high boost. This produces 3.5, so that has to sink in for a second. Of course, we're going to go even higher once everything is nice and warm. Down to lows for the first time, bit of a kick there on the throttle, and of course you're noticing I have to really crank on all the lock round here, nice and smooth. Steering rack round here isn't really suited for Monaco, I must say, but it will get us round, so be nice and careful through lows and through some of the tighter corners. Now into the tunnel for the first time. No reverb in here, which is a shame, because this would sound absolutely awesome if we did have that. Up to fifth gear still. And this car is comparatively easy on the uh, the low boost on 60%. You haven't really got to work too hard to keep it in check. Of course, you still have to keep in mind you've got a lot of turbo lag there. You see it come in as I go for the gear slowly. So we're going to be nice and cautious through here for the first time. Just touching the wall there, just leaving a little bit of rubber there to remind people that I was here once upon a time. The last part of the swimming pool now coming up to the Rascas. Then for Anthony knows and we'll start our attempted fast lap on 60% boost. So here we go, nice and soft out of here. Almost rear tyres, aim for the kerb, there we are, and I'll smash the throttle. Wall spin the way out, having to go up for the gears nice and quick in this thing. Fourth gear, and then up to fifth. Spot our braking zone for Sandivo, down to second gear, hill and toe on the way down. Try and keep some boost on the way out. Car sliding all over the spot there, because you're just trying to keep that temper pressure on at all times. When you're off boost, you are going slowly, so you don't want that. Third gear for Massane, backfire there from the car, what a great sound that was. Now into Casino, second gear. Oh, very close to that wall. I hit the curve there, made a nasty noise. Now down to this very tight section, coming down to lows again. Just trying to keep as much speed as possible there. Very hard to see the front left tyre locking up. We're so stiff there, we're actually not on the ground. Taking a big chunk of curb on the inside there. Still in first gear, still in first gear. And now we can finally unleash that turbo. Oh, no, miss shift. Disaster. So easy to do that in this car. Sometimes you can get away with shifting without using the clutch. I think it's meant to be a dog box this, but it's sometimes it's uh, not as nice. Oh, that was close though. I want to get to that wall there. Jeez, and again on the way out. A little bit of a uh, cold shiver there went up my spine. Now through swimming pools is always fun in this car. Fourth gear, grab the curb on the inside. And then big backfire on the way down. Very nice indeed. <laughs> Keep it nice and sideways out of there. Definitely driving within my limits right now, I'm not trying too hard. We'll, do, we'll go for one more lap on 60% before we turn it up. I need to get used to it now. I want to get a representative that time. That wasn't a bad time, though. That was a 28, I want to say. 28, okay, not bad. Getting down to Massene from fifth to, uh, fifth to second there with a big old heel and toe. Just start using the clutch a bit more now just to make sure I get those gears in, definitely. Then Massane again, we go from fifth gear to third on the hill and toe on the way down, aim for the curb on the inside. Hug it like your favourite granny, as Mr Brundle says. Second gear again. 
Watch the slide over the bump. You avoid the big bump on the left there. That's why I make, take that weird line going down the hill because that big bump on the left upsets the car. Let's get around here. You have to, it's so slow around here. You feel yourself wanting to get on the throttle, but you've got to be patient. We're just clipping the wall there. I'm leaving bits of Goodyear all over the slot, or, uh, sh a shot around here just to remind people that I was here. People have to know that I uh, very badly drove a 1980 at Monaco once, again, for the tunnel. We're not even touching sixth gear on this gearing and this turbo pressure. First gear, just to make sure we have the speed on the way out. You can take second through there, but you end up bogging on the exit, as you can imagine. Oh, I can't understeering. Fourth gear, nice and early. Turning nice and early to counter out that understeer. You can see how bumpy it is through there. It's a rush to go through there at speed. Easy. Raskas again. First gear, I really enjoy driving this car. It's very, very positive feeling. Anthony knows. Oh, just touched the curb on the inside. That's going to slow us up. Anyway, we'll take this time as our lap time for the 60% boost pressure across the line. And it is a 28.2, almost identical to our last lap. So not a bad time. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the pits, crank up that turbo pressure, and we'll see just what a monster this thing is. Well then, so back in the pit lane with our boost adjustment made, we're now up to 100% boost, which at its peak is five bar. That's five bar of turbo pressure. That is just ridiculous. So we're going to be nice and chill on this outlap. Just get used to the power we've got now underneath our right foot. Five bar of boost at its peak is, if AC is to be believed, and of course all the documentation of this car, is about 1,250 brake horsepower. So over, well over 1,000 horsepower in a car that weighs about 600 kilograms. So stupid amounts of power to weight there. Of course, back in the day, uh, this was a qualifying engine that was made to be used and abused on this setting, I should say. Teams would use it, maybe use it for about five, six laps, and then either repair it or just or just chuck it. But nowadays, of course, teams have three or four engines for the season, but it was a bit more fun, a bit more fun back in the day. <laughs> a bit more ludicrous. So let's show you what 1,250 horsepower looks like, shall we, as we go through the tunnel. We're running match down force as well. If I miss a gear, straight to third gear, but still it just pulls like an absolute train. Fifth gear through the tunnel. France are going to the wall on the left there, and now break down for the chicane. Don't go into the harbour. Easy, easy. That turbo lag on the well. We have to use first there, I think, for our hot lap, although I don't really want to. Into the back in third gear. Now for the swimming pool. Oh, wow! Big kick there. That's, just, that's what happens if you're not paying attention there of your right foot. The car just tries to get away from you. Do not want that. That is a bad thing. Anyway, Raskas, <laughs> car please. This is going to be a wild lap, I think. Anyway, so last corner. Here we go for a hot lap with 1,250 horsepower underneath my right foot. Fifth gear, we're going to use sixth gear before going down to Sandevote. Second gear on the apex, on the front as quick as I can. Try and keep that boost pressure going. See the wheel spinning there up the hill. Up to fifth already for Massonet, down to third. Awesome backfire noise there, just blipping the throttle, trying to keep that boost up. Second gear again, just very important to keep in the boost boost range, otherwise you're going to just lose speed down to first. Big downshift that is, maybe a little bit too hard on the revs there, but no worries. Squirt of the throttle down to lows. And again, patience, no matter how much boost you have around here, you have to be nice and patient through the hairpin. Careful in first gear through this sort of very tight and twisty bottom part of a circuit. Oh, just touch the wall there, sorry dude. Leave some rubber behind, don't worry about that. Now for the tunnel. Sixth gear is about 290 k's. We break hard. Try and avoid hitting this wall on the inside. So close on the front wall early. I'm going to stay in second gear because I can't afford to go to first. It would be too difficult. Now to back at speed on the front wall as soon as I can be. Fourth gear, going to keep it flat now. Oh, that was a mistake. We got very close to that wall on the inside. Jeez. Oh, I'm sweating inside this headset. Lots of work goes into driving this car of 100%. Interested to see the time. I'm going to do one more lap though, I think. And then we'll have a look at the time after that because I wasn't too happy with that one. Second gear just pulls and away we go again. The sense of speed round here is unreal with all the, the walls and objects, trackside objects just whizzing by in your peripheral vision. I use the clutch this up just to ensure I get the shifts in. Yeah, then toe down to third gear again, just blipping around here. Massonet is such a difficult one. You want to hug it like your favourite granny, says Mr. Martin Brundle. I think I said that already, but we'll say it again because it's funny. Oh, again, big downshift. 
coming down just to the hairpin now. Banging the limiter in first gear. This engine will be pretty much cooked by now. But we're allowed one more lap because it's a sim. Come on now, easy. Trying to touch this wall this time. Very close to the kerb. Oh, I'm trying to get in the front wheel as soon as I can, but the car is just not having any of it. She's a fast near one. How late can we break? Just before the crest, I can gear again. Oh, wow. Really driving the car into the corner there and just trying to get on the boost on the way out, but just can't quite do it in second. First is unusable. That would be a gearing change, really, for that in a real-life situation. Again, swimming pool, a little bit of a lift this time. This makes sure my lines better. I'm oh, holding on for dear life through there. Crash cast again for the last time. Really interested to see how much quick this was, uh, this was in the 60% boost. Number 28.2 was our time to beat. Coming up then, and to cross the line, and the time is a 24.8. That's the difference <laughs> that 300, 400 extra horsepower makes. <laughs> well, that's definitely a workout. Guys, I'll link the Monaco circuit in the description. The best part about the 98T is that it is stock content. You have All you've got to do is own the base game and the set of course to drive this. So go give it a go. Very hard car to drive, even more difficult to master. But once you get somewhere close, I think that I, I can drive this car okay. It's very satisfying. So go do yourself a favor and go enjoy it. But guys, as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos. Let's try and do a drift do for the hairpin, shall we? Nope. <laughs> Denied. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you all next time.